Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Voodoo Vids in the house. I hope everyone is doing well. So today what I will be doing is I will be um, giving my thoughts on a video uh, by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Now Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, for those of you who do not know, he's a very big scholar in Islam. I would almost see him as the kind of Jordan Peterson of Islam or Jordan Peterson is the Christian version of him. Depends how you look at it. Anyway, I used to listen to a lot of his videos and lectures when I was a Muslim and actually I still watch a lot of his stuff even till today because I find it comforting and um, it's just something that I'm used to. Um, I don't agree with everything he says now or even back then but um, I do like his way of speaking and uh, he does have a lot of knowledge and I think it's important for um, ex-Muslims or atheists in general to highlight some of the good things that Muslim speakers or Christian speakers um, to, to highlight their good points and their good speeches or lectures um, to show that you know, we do look at religion critically. It's not just about bashing religious people all day long, regardless of what they say. We do look at things based on merit. And what I think he said here in this video is very, very interesting. And Muslim and non-Muslim, you can learn from this. So let's get into the video. If you don't have something internally that is telling you not to do this because it's wrong, then you will do things that are wrong when you get the opportunity. They call it opportunity crime. In fact, in England, they just did a study and they were very shocked by the results of the study. They found that, that most of the crimes of juveniles were, were actually committed by 3% of the juvenile population. And the vast majority of juveniles did not actually do opportunity crime. In other words, when they were able to, to, to steal something or do something that was wrong, and they could get away with it, they didn't do it. And in, and in these studies, what they found is they didn't do it because they felt it was wrong. In other words, they had a moral compass. And this is what's called, you know, the anthropologists differentiate between shame and guilt cultures. A shame culture is a culture that where you're afraid of what others are going to say. A guilt culture is a culture where you're afraid of having this feeling inside of you. So you don't do things because you, your own conscience is telling you don't do it. A lot of these people, these juveniles, don't commit the crime even when they have the opportunity to. One thing to note is that the UK is not a very religious country. Uh, it's quite sort of secular, atheist. We don't really care that much about religion. We're kind of over it. Um, so that's one thing to note, that even if you do not necessarily have a very strong religious upbringing, um, that does not mean that you will commit a crime or that you are more likely to, uh, to commit a crime in the absence of someone seeing or someone, you know if, if, you know, if there's not a CCTV, then, you know, the first opportunity you'll get to steal something or kill someone or rape someone, you will take it. Um, I, I'm saying this because atheists or secular people often get accused or they're questioned by religious people saying, well, if you don't believe in a God, then you can basically go out and do all sorts of crimes and immoral things and nothing is stopping you because there's no hellfire. So if you, if you can get away with it in this lifetime, and you don't believe in hell, what's stopping you? There's no punishment in the hereafter. And I think that's a very um, shallow and uh, naive way of looking at things. Uh, but just because we don't believe in a hellfire, where are we going to be punished? That doesn't mean that we don't recognize something uh, wrong or when we see it. In fact, the, the main reason or one of the main reasons why people leave religion in the first place is because they think there is something wrong with it, morally wrong. There's the whole argument about scientifically doesn't make sense and um, historically doesn't make sense but the moral argument people say that maybe you know religion isn't moral enough so we do I mean of course I'm not speaking for every atheist or secular people there are many nasty secular people and uh, you know atheists uh, just as they are in religious communities and so on and so forth but in general those people who have left religion uh, and, and, where it's, and where it's a conscious decision uh, we do recognize that you know there is a, a value and a utility in in respecting people's rights, individual rights, property rights, so on and so forth. And um, just because we can quote unquote get away with it, you know, like there's no camera watching or there's no God watching, that doesn't mean that we are more likely uh, to commit a crime. The problem with shame cultures, and many of the Muslim societies have become shame cultures. The problem with shame cultures is when you can get away with it. You do it because there's no one to shame you, no one to say, Shuma, no one to say shame on you. 
So you can get somebody who lives in a country where they're very concerned about morality, but then they go travel to a faraway place where nobody's around from his, his country, and then he'll do the worst things and have absolutely no moral compunction about doing them. This is a point which um, is so, so true. I have seen so many Muslims or even conservative Christians people who have a very strict upbringing, the moment they can get away from their family and their wider community, they will start doing the things that are not allowed. So for example, um, I know many Muslim uh, friends of mine and people, but when I went to university and uh, I was Muslim back then, and when I used to meet other Muslim students, of course not every Muslim student is like this, some were religious and some were amazing people. But some, I mean, they were raised Muslim and they, and they told me that they were raised Muslim. Um, but the moment they got away from their family, the moment they got away from their community, they would be the heaviest drinkers, they would take the most drugs, they would sleep around the most. They would do all the things that their parents told them not to do. And they knew it was wrong according to their religion. I'm not judging you. I'm, I mean, this is, this is the way you were raised. I don't, I'm not blaming you. But the reason why they do these things is because there's no one there to shame them anymore. Their parent, their imam, their older brother or whoever it is, their auntie and uncle aren't there to tell them, what are you doing? Why are you drinking? Why are you with this girl? Why are you with this guy? So they did it. Now, people think, oh, this is a result of freedom. If you give people too much freedom, this is what happens. No, this is what happens when you raise your children with a shame culture. So if you remove them from the shame culture, guess what? They'll start doing the things that you told them not to do. However, if you raise them with the guilt culture, i.e. they should feel guilty when they do something wrong. Forget about what everyone else is saying. Even if no one in the world said you did something wrong. If you did something wrong, you should feel it inside your own heart. So people often confuse this. Oh, with, we have too much freedom in the West. This is Oh, we have too much freedom. This is why Muslim people in the West, they go crazy or, or, or women go crazy. Well, if you raise the women or even men in a, in a society or in a culture where you don't give them freedom, but you punish them with shame. When you remove the shame and give them freedom, they'll be like, oh man, I'm going to do all sorts of stuff. I'm going to do everything that wasn't allowed before. But if you train them with some freedom and tell them that you shouldn't do something wrong because it's wrong in itself, right? And you should feel guilty when you do something wrong. Then you're going to have a situation where even if people are presented with the opportunity to commit a crime, they will not. Not because of hell, not because of heaven, not because of some guy in the sky or your mom and dad watching you behind the bushes, because it's wrong. It's a rule-based society. There's nothing in the heart that's telling him this is wrong. So he'll abuse a woman, he'll cheat, he'll lie, he'll steal, he'll get a degree by plagiarizing, by paying people to write his papers, because he doesn't care. He also said that this is what happens with rule cultures, where you have so many rules, trying to stop people from doing certain things. Um, and this is why I have a problem with uh, these sort of Puritans or these sort of types of Muslims or even Christians that are obsessed with, we have to have this law to, to, uh, to stop this person from doing this thing. And women, men and women can't be in the same room together without someone be. When you are obsessed with the rules and not with the actual individual, you may cover up, you may, uh, paper over the cracks and it may look like a society which is moral but deep down like I said the moment these guys are alone they will be doing all sorts of things and this is you know this is what I'm sort of annoyed by with these sort of Salafi Wahhabi guys where they have you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this uh, those kind of societies do not produce more moral people they produce people who may appear moral but uh, do exactly the same things or even worse when no one is watching you. Um, so if you want to create a moral society, focus on internalizing certain values that are, uh, you know, for example, you respect people's property, you respect their personhood, you don't steal from them, you don't rape them. Uh, these types of things, you teach manners, all these sorts of things, instead of saying, 
don't do this, it's five lashes, don't do this, it's da 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 da, -da. this punishment, that punishment, brother or sister, you can't be in the same room together, so on and so forth. That creates an empty society, and not a society that is driven by morality, but by fear and punishment. So that's my two, uh, two cents on this, or two pence, or whatever, two rupees. Uh, on Sheikh Hamdou Yusuf I, I, I still respect him on many many things I think he's a great uh, person He's someone I listen to a lot I would recommend you listen to him as well I don't agree with a, 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 lot, a lot of the stuff he says um, But I think he's a very interesting voice to listen to And to have in the conversation So I hope that's been interesting Food for thought And uh, if you like the video Please consider supporting me on Patreon I've got so many more videos lined up And uh, I'll be happy to hear what kind of videos you enjoy the most from this channel i do commentary comedy live streams gonna go outside and talk to people so hit me up on that uh, in, in the comment section and if you can support the channel please do so on patreon i will see you guys next time